So welcome back. I thought I would take the time since our channel is about everything we do here on our property from DIY projects to gardening to how we put up food. And I thought I would share with you how we, me and Tiffany, my wife, save killer money on food. I'm talking tremendous amounts of money we save throughout the year. So here's a few little tips and tricks, the things that we look out for and what we do to save that money. So I just got back from the store. I want to tell you how we look for deals. So not only do we save an amazing amount of money by growing our own food here, harvesting our own animals. Actually, I'll be doing some processing in a video coming up in the next few days, showing you how I process an animal that we harvested right here off the property. But there's also killer deals to be found out there. And I think a lot of people don't really know where to look for groceries. So hopefully this may catch your attention and we'll talk about some more stuff in this video, but I just got back from the grocery store and I want y'all to see something here. In this box is 40 pounds of chicken leg quarters. Look at the price. And no, that's not a joke. And actually that's more than I paid for this same package a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully that caught your attention, especially if you're shopping at the big name brand places. Chicken leg quarters, yeah, it's a pretty basic cut of meat, but it's so useful in so many different meals. 40 pounds of chicken leg quarters, ready to go for $14.95. And I actually got the same box for $13 for 40 pounds of meat just a couple of weeks ago on a killer sale that our local grocery store was offering. So also today I picked up some steaks. I am a ribeye man, love ribeyes and Delmonico's. I picked up some of those today for $6.99. That's a sale price I can find quite often, although this past summer, my goodness, most places wanted 15 plus dollars a pound for your ribeyes. I also picked up some T-bones today for $3.99. That was another excellent sale price. While T-bones not my favorite cut for $3.99, I'll gladly take a T-bone over, well, a double cheeseburger from McDonald's. So let me show you how we put food up, how serious I am about the process I'm gonna show you today. And then I'll explain where we get all this good deals. So take a peek in here. This is just one of many freezers that we have. Look at all the vacuum sealed meat, the sausages. This is all venison down here. Tons of garden vegetables, squash, zucchini, okra. There's corn down there, peppers, beans. This is all off of our property right here. More meat. It just keeps going, right? Peanuts, more venison, more peppers. We also have another deep freezer. We also have another stand-up freezer and refrigerator. Tiffany and I literally put up probably close to a thousand pounds of food a year, and we try to do it in bulk when we can really catch these sales, which are only at certain times, or as you just seen, all those vegetables come out of our garden. We won't discuss that much today because I do videos on gardening, and there's plenty of those already on the channel. But the majority of that food you're looking at in there, we have very little cost in. So how we find these deals, I'm about to tell you how we do that and how we prepare and put up this food uh, to make these sales really work. Because again, you can only catch them every so often. So first and foremost, stop going to your big name brand retailers and looking for deals. You're typically just not gonna find them. And some of your more well-known places are starting to really, really get overpriced on their offering. For example, I bet one bag of chicken quarters, what, a five or 10 pound bag at some of the big name retailers probably cost what I just bought 40 pounds for today. So how we typically look for the sale prices try to get out of the big towns or get on the outskirts of the big towns you're looking for the small mom and pop shops uh, we have a huge metropolitan area about 45 minutes from us with all your Publix and your other big name brand places that are very high priced but if you'll notice you start getting on the outside of town you start seeing meat markets and individuals names on it that's where you start looking. Plus your older like IGAs, for example, a lot of those get bought out and now they're running what's called a cost plus 10%. So literally the way that works is it's their cost plus 10% added on at the register. That's it. So as you just seen right here, this is a Bob and Jeff. So basically they went in all the old IGAs. They seem to have moved into those buildings. I don't know if they're still partnering with them or the way it works. And the cool thing about these small places is not only do you get to go in there and see local people that you know, you're supporting them, the butcher's right there, you can ask him to go back and cut and do whatever you want. 
We also go on Facebook. Whenever we go to these small towns, you'd be shocked at how many back streets and small meat markets. I've seen some that are literally about two to three times the size of this room. You walk in, the owner is the butcher. You're talking with him. He'll go back and cut you whatever you want. And oftentimes they'll do the cost plus 10% as well. So we've been saving all of these uh, small businesses on Facebook, for example. And then whenever the flyers pop up, the sale prices, we know to run over and snatch these deals up. So go start looking through Facebook, drive the back streets on your small towns, get away from the big metro areas to where all the big name brand stores are, look down the side streets, look for people's names, look for titles called meat markets. That's typically where you're gonna find amazing deals. All right, so I have a new tool to play with today. As y'all can see, vacuum sealing and putting food up, I mean, literally a thousand plus pounds a year, is a huge part of our food preservation here. We do some canning, but just works very well for us freezing. And we have multiple freezers in case of failures, multiple coolers, so we can quickly move things around. Uh, they're very efficient, don't use much electricity. It's just something I've always found comfortable. Now, a key to freezing food long-term, especially fattier foods like some chickens or porks, fat typically doesn't freeze well, you've got to get the air out. Otherwise, you get that freezer burnt taste. Now, my venisons and leaner meat, I have ate some of that meat that kind of got thrown in the back corner. Three years later, out of a vacuum sealed package, I can't tell a difference at all. I'm a huge believer in vacuum sealing for preservation. So that brings me to today's video sponsor. Y'all know that I've been working with a company called Vivor for a while. They've been just an awesome sponsor for the channel. Literally have anything under the sun on their website you can think of, from tractor stuff to household stuff. But what they're most likely known for is their ice makers, their commercial uh, like kitchen equipment, home kitchen equipment. They seem to have more of that stuff than anything else. So it's time for me to retire my old vacuum sealer game saver right here that I've had for whew, 15 years and I have wore out. I've literally run thousands of bags through this and now we're going to move into something that's a little more heavy duty and commercial. This is one sweet vacuum sealer. So for starters, if you love throwing your money away, go buy the big name brand food saver bags. Don't do that. I buy 50 foot rolls at a time in bulk, usually in four packs, 100 to 200 feet at a time of your standard vacuum seal bags off of Amazon. Extremely affordable. You cut the bag to the size that you want. I typically run eight inch and 11 inch bags fits all of my needs. So the good news is this new vacuum sealer takes your standard bags. You can find them at Walmart, but Amazon's where you're gonna get your best deal, buying them in long bulk rolls. So one thing that I am falling in love with, I have never used a commercial machine, but I've always seen these at like animal processors and I see why they run them now. You have so much more control here than you get with your typical big box store vacuum sealers like you've seen that I just had, which basically has no control. You control your vacuum time, basically how much vacuum you're pulling in the chamber itself, your sealing, uh, your sealing time for your heat strip in here, and your cool down time, and there's different buttons for sealing. Plus, it also comes with an awesome gauge, which I'm already finding I do watch for your vacuum, your pressure, and you can kind of learn how and what types of food, what pressures you want to work with. So for starters, this has like a three quarter inch formed plexiglass lid, extremely strong because you're putting a tremendous amount of vacuum in this chamber. It's also got a removable shelf so you can do bigger, thicker bags. That's gonna be very important to me whenever I'm doing a lot of our spring garden vegetables. I need the room. And this big formed dome top right here will give me that room to save for bags of corn and things like that. So the other thing that I really like about these more commercial units is the heat strip. So that is a huge key between one of these units and one of those little basic, you know, home residential type units. For example, if you just go get a run-of-the-mill vacuum sealer, where well, the heat strip overheats very quickly. You can literally only seal a couple of bags before they have to go in cool down mode. So they'll start flashing. Then you have to stop your work and wait. You're not gonna see that um, on a commercial unit like this. This is designed for high capacity, high run through. This model also comes with an extra heat strip included. Love to see that. It's got one heck of a heavy duty vacuum pump inside. I've already taken the back cover off because these come shipped with no oil in them, but they do provide the oil in the seal container. So you take the back cover off for screws, you fill the pump up, there's a nice sight glass right there. You're in business, that's all that you have to do. But the internal components look awesome. I'm talking a very large vacuum 
vacuum sealing pump. And let me tell you something, this thing is a beast. And I'm talking like 50 some odd pounds. It's just insane. Now this really is not for the person that's just gonna run through a few bags, but you, if you're like us and put up tons of garden vegetables, you hunt, you put up a lot of fish, wild game, uh, which is what I'm gonna be doing in the next video, this will pay for itself so quickly. There's far more value in uh, meat and vegetables in that freezer than this thing costs right here many times. All right, enough yakking right. Let's put this thing to work. So I'm gonna show you something else that I did not realize about these that is awesome whenever it comes to putting up anything that's wet or bloody. These don't have near the cleanup that your old countertop models like I just shown you do. All right, for starters, I went ahead and made me up a bunch of bags off camera, just cut the length that I felt like I needed off of the roll. Went ahead and popped them in, closed the lid. It's all automatic. Let me show you how to do that and seal my bag. So this is your heating strip here. You lift this little bar up, put my bag right over the heating strip. That'll hold it down. And then you close the lid, vacuum pump kicks on. The heating element now is heating and it's gonna release. This is all automatic. How awesome is that? Now the other thing that I love about this unit, I don't know how well y'all can focus in and see, but you got my heat strip a bit hot. I love that I can adjust that too. Huge wide heat strip. Your little home models do a tiny, and I mean tiny little seal. And let me show you what the problem with that is. You see that tiny little pitiful seal that I get from that food saver unit? Well look, the seal has already failed and this bag of vegetables now is pulling air in, which is not good. These little seals just don't last. All right, so now that I've made me a bag up, I'll stick about eight to 10 of these chicken quarters in there. God, I just love having this processing room. This is this room out in my shop if you're new to the channel, and I built this just for processing meats and vegetables. All right, so that's about how many we'll put in a bag, and I'll typically smoke or grill these. You can do whatever you want, put them in casseroles, chicken and rice, that's what chicken quarters are just so versatile. We just smoked some the other night. And we can get several meals out of one bag like this that I literally have, I don't know, a dollar or two in. That's just crazy. So I'm gonna take this tray out. So it's working with such a thick bag. Put it in here across the heat strip. And this is such a cool process. So here's another thing about these types of vacuum sealers because we're pulling vacuum in a chamber now. We're not sucking the air, pulling the air out of a bag like your old cheap countertop models. That causes the bag to scrunch. That pulls meat, blood, and juices out of the bag so you can't marinate or really do anything. That's not the way this right here works. This is the actual chamber. This is just night and day better. And I didn't even realize it until I have it now. So I'm gonna close this. It's gonna pull a vacuum and then I guess it dumps air. I don't know exactly what it does. Then it sucks the bag tight right as it's sealing it. Um, and then you never pop any of those juices, blood, nothing out. It's practically no cleanup in this unit other than a quick wipe down because there may be chicken on the outside of the bag. All right, I have this set up for a decent amount of pressure. That's all adjustable as well, but it's pretty much automatic. Once you close this lid, the switch kicks on, pulls the vacuum on the lid, let it loose, and it'll do its thing automagically. See the gauge flying down right there. It's pulling a heck of a vacuum on this. But watch the bag. It's not pulling the air out of the bag like you're used to. It's pulling the air out of this chamber and it's about to all dump here in just a second and quickly suck the bag to that chicken. And it's pulling a major vacuum. That's awesome. So strong. Watch, here it goes. Look at that. <laughs> Automatic, opens up by itself too. Look at that level of vacuum seal right there and look at the beautiful seal. I love that, absolutely love this. I cannot achieve this good of a vacuum right here with the countertop model. Never been able to do that. Isn't that so cool? Now, here we go right in my very full freezer and I tell y'all what, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but a freezer packed with food like this to me 
it's just as good as money in the bank. I love this filling. We're taken care of for a very long time with the amount of food that we have stored everywhere. All right, let's do another one. That's actually fun to me. I still can't get over 40 pounds of chicken, y'all, for $15. And just bought it for $13. It just blows my mind. I love watching that. Ready to go. Okay, that only took just a few minutes and look at what we got here. We've got a few smaller ribeye steaks, but they have decent marbling in them. I hand picked those out the store. Nice looking T-bones, some of them really nice and thick. I mean, I'm not a T-bone guy, but my goodness, $3.99, yeah, load me up. And we wound up with about 70 chicken quarters and they all are really good size, good looking chicken quarters. That's just a rough guess there, rough count. It'll look to be 70-ish. So here's the crazy thing when you think about it. I've got three ribeyes, four good-sized T-bones, and 70 chicken quarters, and I bought all this for less than you and your significant other can go out to dinner for to say, get one of these meals. While going out's fun and entertaining, we totally understand that. We hope on this channel as we garden and find deals like this and preserve food and put up that we inspire some of y'all to go out there and do that as well. A lot of people really at the end of the month sit there and wonder where all their money's went, where things have went. And if a lot of people would take time to sit down, they'd realize a gigantic amount of their money is going to either grocery bills or out to dinner. And typically you're getting far worse food going out to dinner then you can go buy bulk discounts like this. Then you can spend the time cooking it and enjoying it with your family in the afternoon. So hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks here. This new machine is a beast. I'm about to put everything in the freezer because I don't want it to warm up on me. Sanitize everything. I'm done. I have just put up countless, no, I don't know how many meals this is going to be for us for practically no money and just a little bit of my time. Go find deals like this. Go find your small mom and pop shops. Support local businesses by doing that and typically you're going to get far better deals. Go put you some food up. Far better food than the fast food junk and everything else you're going to go out there and get. And have you a nice stash, a comforting stash of food. Something ever happens, at least you've got a lot of food that you can fall back on. And vacuum sealing is just another great way to long-term preserve food. Catch y'all in the next video.